Hi, I'm Fernando Ferreira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. And today we shall talk about a program representation that is perhaps the most important for code analysis and optimizations. That's called the Control Flow Graph, or CFG for short. So, what's a program representation to start with? The things that compilers and programmers uh, they do not see a program in the same way. Programmers see text written in a high-level programming language. However, to process the program, compilers need to store this program as a data structure. So, this data structure that represents a program is what we call a program representation. For instance, the first thing that a compiler does usually is to translate the source code, that text, into a data structure called an abstract syntax tree. But once we move deeper into the compilation pipeline, this abstract syntax tree ends up translated into the second program representation called a control flow graph. The control flow graph is much closer to the machine code than the abstract syntax tree. That's one of the reasons why the middle end of the compiler uses CFGs, that is, control flow graphs, instead of abstract syntax trees. But what is then a control flow graph? This is a graph in which vertices are what we call basic blocks. Basic blocks are sequences of instructions. The edges represent the possible flows of execution across basic blocks. We shall use this program on the right to illustrate what a control flow graph is. You can try to figure out what the program does, but uh, that will not really be important for this presentation. Just take the program as code. We will use LLVM to generate the control flow graph of the program. LLVM is the compilation framework that we will use in most of this course, by the way. Notice that it follows a design very similar to any typical compiler. In particular, the middle end is a tool called OPT. We will use OPT to visualize a control flow graph. If you have LLVM installed, then you can produce the intermediate representation of a program using this command. The first command, clang, is the compiler's front end. The middle end, OPT, is the tool that implements analysis and optimizations. And here you can see the control flow graph of our example program. Uh, don't worry about reading what's inside the vertices of the graph for now. These vertices are the basic blocks. They contain program instructions. Semantically, this program does the same thing as its original version, which we saw written in C before. The edges show the possible paths of execution within the codes of the program. So you can think about this representation as assembly code, in a way. So what's a basic block? They are sequences of instructions that always execute consecutively. That means that basic blocks can only have branches at the end. Also, the program flow can only enter a basic block through the first instruction. Let me pose this question then. If we observe the binary representation of a program, we will only see a sequence of instructions, a long sequence of instructions, I mean. So, how can we split the sequence of instructions that form a program into basic blocks? For that, we need to identify the so-called leaders. A leader is how we call the first instruction of a basic block. Can you think about a way to recognize leaders? That's not difficult. The first instruction of the program, of its intermediate code, I mean, is a leader. Then, any instruction that's the target of a jump is a leader as well. And third, any instruction that follows a branch is also a leader. Then, once we find the leaders in the program instructions, it's easy to identify basic blocks. Basically, all the instructions from a leader until the next leader, not including it, form a basic block. 
Notice that each basic block, by definition, in this case, contains one single leader, always its first instruction. And uh, this discussion closes our first class about control flow graphs. In the next class, we will talk a bit about some simple compiler optimizations. Until there, you can write me with questions or comments.